We produce this video because of our problems getting propane tanks filled correctly, which led to dangerous conditions. We will begin with the fill sequence. After the fill valve is attached, the tank valve is opened. Next, the liquid level bleeder valve is opened one quarter of a turn. The bleeder valve allows the attendant to know when the liquid reaches the proper level. Open the filler valve to start filling the tank with liquid propane. The liquid propane will rise until it reaches the liquid level tube inside the tank. When the liquid issues from the bleeder valve, the tank is full. Once the tank is full, shut the filler valve and then close the bleeder. Now shut the tank valve so that the filler can be removed. This is one method of filling the tank. The other approved method is using a scale and the information stamped on the tank. We feel that this method is easier to make a mistake and in turn overfill the tank. Identifying the contents, yellow is the liquid, blue is the vapor or gas. The liquid level tube controls how much vapor is above the liquid in the tank. Only propane vapor should exit the tank through the valve. If the liquid is allowed to exit through the valve, the regulator cannot work properly and a dangerous condition could arise. For all of the aforesaid reasons, an LP tank shall only be filled and used in the orientation for which it was designed. Now that the tank has been filled properly, the regulator is attached. All connections should be tested with a mixture of soap and water to check for leaks. So what happens when the gas is used within the tank? When an appliance is turned on, the pressure drops in the tank and propane starts changing from a liquid to a vapor state. Thus, the liquid propane boils within the tank, creating the LP gas that is used by your appliances. So what happens if the tank is overfilled? Too much liquid means that there is not enough vapor space. The vapor space compensates for changes in tank temperature. When the tank has too much pressure, the pressure relief valve will vent the excess pressure. This prevents the tank from rupturing, but can cause a situation that is not safe if there is an ignition source when the tank vents. Now we will show an RV refrigerator burner connected to the tank to show how to troubleshoot pressure issues. If the fridge is not cooling on LP gas, the LP pressure should be checked. Start by turning off the gas at the tank valve and then use the stove top to burn off the excess LP in the lines. Generally there is a cap on the regulator that covers the regulator pressure adjustment screw. Also, most RVs have a pressure test port near the regulator. Attach a manometer to the test port. It's easy to make a manometer out of clear tubing. A manometer is just a tube in the shape of a U that has one end connected to the pressure port and the other end open to the atmosphere. When the tank is turned on and the burner is lit, the water in the manometer should rise 11 inches. Turn off the tank valve and remove the pressure in the lines before taking off the manometer and replacing the test port. On most appliances, there's a filter in the valve assembly. This filter can be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. If the filter is plugged, the pressure will be lower when read at the gas jet pressure test port. Thank you for viewing this video. This video is not comprehensive. It is intended as an overview. We at Fridge Defend promote RV safety and knowledge, making your trip more enjoyable.